He's the undefeated heavyweight lineal champion. You might say he was born to fight. It even runs in his blood. And only I have the USA exclusive on this once in a lifetime interview with Mick Terrell. So we have some video of your response to Joey Beltran that we're gonna roll now. Right, Mick, what do you feel about Joey Beltran calling himself the end level boss? I just think that's fucking laughable. How can he be the end level boss when I've fucking made the game, man? You know what it is? I've heard them all at it. I've heard Beltron at it. Is that his name, Beltron? I've heard Showmaker at it. I've even heard Gonzago at it. I mean, if they want a taste, let's fucking go. I'm ready. Had you ever even heard of Joey Beltron before this? Actually, I had. Um, I've seen him get knocked out of Rampage Jackson. But that's all I've ever seen of Joey. And then he was, he was saying he was the end, was it the end level boss? Yeah, I think it was. And you know what it is? It's like, blokes playing computer games. I'm at the gym. If he wants to play computer games, I'm at the gym, me. I'm trying to punch people, not to uh, press A and B. All right, the most important question of the interview. When the heck can we see you in the USA? <laughs> as soon as possible. Um, I'm itching to go. Um, I've been training really hard. Um, just been simmering for the past few years, you know, because there was no real fights left for us. And then once Mozzie got in touch with us to say there's a chance of a fight in USA, I've really turned on the heat, you know, and um, I'm itching to get there and I'm itching to punch somebody. You're planning on coming to Florida, I heard. Is that true? Yes, I've been to Florida a couple of times. I love the place. Um, we've been to Orlando, with, obviously, with the kids. Um, and I think the, the end goal is to really try and relocate there. I think if I can relocate there, get the training done, I'll save them pain as uh, plane flights getting over there anyways. But uh, I think I'll definitely sell up here, sell my house and move over there, definitely. Mm. I love the place. So, what are you looking forward to most to do when you get here? Fight. That's what <laughs> I'm designed to do. I, I love fighting. It's... Um, People ask what, what you do fighting for. I just, I do fighting because I like fighting. What's a typical training day like for you? I, I heard Ian tell me earlier today that you're an electrician. So how do you work during the day and work out twice? What's a typical training session like for you? It's usually I wake up early, take the dogs out, uh, go to work, and then I'll come home. And um, I've got a good strength and coach con uh, trainer called Buzz Jones. Um, and what I'll do is I'll go and do strength and conditioning. I do some pad work, and then I've I've actually got some good sparring partners, people bigger than me. Uh, one's called Veteran, and the other one's called Steve Robinson. And uh, I just spar as much as I can. I do strength and conditioning three times a week. Um, I try and run as much as I can, and uh, as pad work as much as I can, as well as work. Speaking of training, you built an amazing gym at home. I heard. Yeah, unfortunately in Britain, our gyms have been shut down um, and it's boring. So, I mean, I'm lucky Baz has got a little unit we can train in, the strength and conditioning coach. But uh, I just decided to buy myself a squat rack. I bought myself 200 kilos of weight, um, Latin rope pull, and I've been working out in the, me and my children, just been working out in the, in the garage, the poverty gym. So will you bring in your same team over when you get to the U.S.? I would hope so. It's, uh, God willing not to pay for it. I think we'll all come over and cause havoc. So I heard a rumor <laughs> that you are very much looking forward to try a typical U.S. meal. What is it and why? Well, we, I've had a few over here. It's a peanut butter and jam sandwich. I think you call it jelly. But um, I would like that on pancakes as well. Uh, pancakes is the... Uh, last time I went to Florida, I was Denny's. I was going to Denny's for, for pancakes. And they uh, were well, amazing. I love American pancakes. Is it more important for you to be respected or feared? Um, it depends. Obviously, outside of the ring, you just want to be respected. Inside the ring, you've got to have the fear. If people aren't scared, it's, um, they'll try and push you back. So much of the fight is mental. How do you mentally prepare for a fight? Um, 
I'm quite lucky, mate. I don't. My wife calls us the Tin Man. She says I've got no emotions. But um, I've, I've been quite lucky. I don't really get nervous. Uh, usually, literally just before a fight, I'll go to sleep. I'll do pad work about an hour before my fight, and then I'll have a sleep. And then me, me train, I'll wake us up and say, how are you? let's go. Um, but you've got to have that fear. I, like, I always check my opponents out. I want to see what they're doing, what they're good at, what they're not good at. Uh, what I can work around. If you didn't, you'd be stupid. It's the it's a heavyweight game, and it takes one punch and you you're out. So you've got to make sure you've got a game plan going in. If you've got the right game plan, you shouldn't be too nervous. You know, one of my favorite fighters of all time, Melvin Gillard. Let's talk about that. Yeah, Melvin's a character. I've met him a couple of times. Um, I think he cornered Josh when I fought Josh, and uh, Melvin's voice is the one you hear. And uh, he's good crack. Honestly, he's, he's funny. He's, he's a good lad as well. It's, um, I like him. I think he's a good lad. What is left on your bucket list? Bucket list? For fighting or in life? Me either. I would like to relocate to Florida. I'd really love to move to America. Um, I love the place. I want to win this world title. Be two of us to give us. I don't care who it is. Could be Joey. Josh, Shoemaker, I'm not bullied. Anyone I get the chance, at, I'll punch them. Speaking of Shoemaker and Beltron, who do you think is going to win that fight? Because that's coming up. It's, oh, you know what it is? It's, it's, it's hard to judge because Shoemaker's got good power. Yes. But like I said, Beltran's got that zombie technique where he takes the punishment and he takes it well. And he, he's relentless. He just... He, He's like a Duracell bunny. He just keeps coming. <laughs> Who do you fight for? Do you know what it is? There's a lot of cheesy quotes. Like, I fight for my family. I fight for this. I fight for me. I just want to hit people. I fight because I like fighting. I don't do it for anybody else. My wife doesn't like us fighting. My kids really don't like it. Um, and I, I love it. So I just fight for me. Speaking of your family, I heard that you were kind of a... Family guy outside of combat sports. Yes, I've got three kids and a wife. I've been um, I've been with my wife for eighteen years now. Um, I love her a bit, you know. She's uh, she's great for me. She helps us when I'm training. She's I get no whinging, no moaning. I get my tea on the table. Uh, going from work, she's um, she's a great wife. Obviously, I've got three little kids as well. Like they they're no bother. So, will they go into combat sports? Do you think? No. Definitely not. Uh, you get your face smashed in, and um, yeah. I always try to get my kids to stay in the school. I'll, I'll have my kids train, but there's no need for them to get their faces smashed in. I think they've, um, I think they've had a different upbringing to me. Um, so I think I would rather they didn't do it as a dad. I mean, I think a lot of dads want to see their kids do it, but I don't. I'd rather they didn't. What makes you such a dangerous fighter? I don't care. It's, uh, I honestly don't care. I actually enjoy going in there. Um, and I'm accurate. If I, if I think I've cut you, I'll continue to punch you in that spot. I've, I've ripped you wide open. And um, I think I'm just very accurate and quite elusive. Speaking of that, how would you describe your style to fans that have not had a chance to see you fight? Open. I would say I was very open. I, I fight with my hands down. Um, I think I've got quite decent footwork. Um, but I, I fight with my hands down to lure you in. I just want to lure you into a trap and then reach over and punch you. It's, um, I would say I was elusive. So what range do you think you will fight here in the U.S.? Um, I would say I was an aggressive counterfighter. So I, I like to be on the outside, feigning shots. And then once they've stepped in, I like to be on a mid-range, mid-range, and then maybe wrestling or close range, get a couple of my cuts in and then neck off as fast as I can. Before we go today, is there anything else you would like to add, Mick? And please give us your social media handle, sir. Um, get us over there as quick as possible. I'm desperate to hit somebody. Um, hey, my social media is just Facebook, I think. I'm sure I've got an Instagram, I think it's just my name. Um, I'm not very good on the social medias, but that's what I've got Mozzie for. 
All right, huge thanks to Mitro from taking the time across the pond to interview with me today. I'm Susan Singari for Bare Knuckle News. And remember, no one beats us to the punch. <laughs>